Hey guys, it's Jake from Cargroves, and today we're going to be trying to revive old batteries with Epsom salt. Basically, I have several batteries that are either not cranking what they're in or just completely won't hold, hold the charge at all. I've put all of these on the charger over the last couple of days. The weird thing is some of them will hold a charge. They'll come up to, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12 volts. But then when you stick them in the, uh, like, like for instance, the four wheeler battery, if we put this on here, I'm showing 10.8 volts on it but it absolutely will not crank the four-wheeler. And this sat on a trickle charger for like three days. Right here is out of the Jeep. One volt after charging for a day. This one came out of the E30. 0.24 volts. And this one Crapped out on me in North Arkansas last month uh, in the Lexus, and I had to get a new battery. 2.7. All right, let's talk about safety real quick. Wear eye protection, wear some gloves, maybe long sleeves, I don't know. I did have gloves and eye protection on. Do it in a place where you have ventilation. That means you either can open doors or outside have a fan running just in case there's any fumes or chemicals that come out um, it's probably safer to have a fan blowing and then the other thing is i believe when you charge up a battery especially when you're reconditioning or put put a fresh mixture of solution in i believe they outgas a little bit so to be on the safe side and not blow caps or anything weird happen i'm gonna leave all the caps off these batteries while i'm charging them i don't think it makes a difference and if they come back up and charge we'll cap them off and be good to go is we're gonna take a solution of distilled water and Epsom salt we're gonna mix those together we're gonna dump out the acid in these batteries we're going to mix the Epsom salt water solution with the acid we're gonna flush these batteries out once they're empty and try to get any lead or contaminants that are in the bottom out and then we're gonna refill them and put them on the charger and see if we can get them all up to 12 volts. All right, so one of the first steps we're gonna do is we're going to heat up some distilled water. You can get this pretty much anywhere for about like $1.50 a gallon. So we're gonna heat up some of this in a large container. And then we're gonna start feeding in our Epsom salts and basically we want to make a pretty concentrated solution of Epsom salt and the heat is going to help the salt uh, dissolve into the water. Alright, once the water starts boiling, just start feeding your Epsom salt in there. And you just want to get it to dilute in the water and not have any freestanding salt at the bottom of the pan. All right, that was a four pound bag in one gallon of water and it completely dissolved. So the real simple way to explain a battery is that it has lead plates running through it and it has a electrolyte solution, commonly like sulfuric acid in the battery. Putting a charge to it from your alternator or however you're charging your batteries, it'll actually hold that charge in the, the solution in the plates. Over time, the plates get, I don't know how you would describe it, uh, corroded or oxidized. The solution can't make a good contact to the plates and you lose charging power. So you might have this battery on a charger for two days and only get it up to three volts or whatever. It's because it just can't make enough contact to build the charge. So the theory behind this is 
is that when you mix in the Epsom salt, it creates a different reaction and cleans that scale off the lead plates, which will allow it to charge. So we're gonna give it a try. It's basically been battery apocalypse month here at the Cargroves shop. I've already replaced two or three batteries in a couple of these vehicles. And so we're gonna try it on these old ones and see if we can revive them. As you guys know, if you've priced batteries, a little full wheeler battery like this is $90. A more traditional battery like this, I think O'Reilly's has them for like 160 or something crazy. Uh, prices vary. I mean, you can get a used battery, I think an interstate battery for, I think like 50 bucks. But a new battery is pretty much over $100, whatever you're going to get. So we're going to see if we can revive these. I think we're going to be able to do four batteries for about 20 bucks total. I don't know if y'all can see this in the bucket, but it definitely has some heavy metals floating around in it, and that could be one of the problems. So we're gonna pull these caps on all these batteries, dump this fluid out, and check it out. Okay, so now we're gonna rinse these batteries out. And what we're trying to do is get metals like the lead off the bottom of the battery so it's not bridging the plates. Because sometimes batteries can go bad from lead bridging. Okay, at this stage, I'm letting the batteries drain upside down. This is after we have dumped all the acid into a container and flushed the batteries. This is pretty weak solution. You can handle it with your hands. It shouldn't damage anything on your property. Okay, so if you're wondering about the green battery, all the other ones when I went to drain them, uh, they kind of chugged out like you were emptying out a container and they were noticeably empty. Uh, the green battery, I held it for like probably a couple minutes and it was just slowly dripping out. I don't know if it was like the, the plate design in it or what. So that one I decided not to flush just in case there was more acid in it. Basically turkey based off the top and fill the batteries back up. The thinking behind that is, is that any heavy lead or any other metals that are in there would drop to the bottom and we're not going to suck those up. That way, if any of the batteries have bridging issues, that hopefully will be resolved. So we'll see how it goes. So I've got the Epsom salt and acid mixed together, and this is what I'm using right here. This little baster is called a Superstar bulb type battery filler, and I got it at O'Reilly's for like $5. have the batteries filled with the uh, Epsom salt and used acid solution a couple observations one be careful with the acid the Epsom salt and used acid solution that I was using the few drops that I got on the concrete you could visibly or audibly and visibly see that they were eating the concrete so yeah be careful don't get it on you or your concrete uh, if you do neutralize it with some baking soda, calcium, uh, maybe vinegar, you have to look it up. After the batteries were drained of their acid, when I put them on the voltmeter, they still read almost identical voltages, dry to empty. And then when I put the new solution in and checked them, they still had the same, you know, one volt on them. So it kind of leads me to believe that the charge is actually held in the plates. 
Two of the batteries have pop caps, like traditional old style tractor batteries. You can pop the caps off the screwdriver, it's just two caps, and then underneath there were three cells. The other two were sealed batteries, but if you looked really close, you could see where the cells were, and there were press fit caps in there, and I was easily able to get them out with a small flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna put these batteries on the charger. We'll come back in a couple hours and test them all and see what they did. So it's been about six hours, which is a little bit short of a time to do four batteries. I went down the line. I hit all the big ones with 50 <clears throat> for just 50 amp for just a couple of minutes, just to kind of initialize it, set it to kill. Then I did 10 amps on those three uh, each for about 10 minutes. And then I bumped it down to two amp and I let them sit for about an hour and a half each on two amp. The motorcycle battery, I put on uh, two amp uh, for about an hour and a half. And I got a little frisky and I hit it with 50 for literally like 10 seconds and it pushed fluid out the top. So don't do that. Don't put it on 50 for a motorcycle battery. But I'm excited. I haven't tested them yet. So this will be... This will be the first go. So let me see if I can do this. Woo, 12.7. All right, so that one's good. Four wheeler battery. 12.3, oh man, <laughs> this is working out better than I thought, and man, this is hard to do, and show the camera, 11.11, 11. so that one's going to need a little bit longer on the trickle, and then I got this last one down here, let's turn the, let's turn it off. Eleven point ten. Eleven point oh eight. I'm I'm shocked. So we just brought back all four of these batteries. The last two are not quite at twelve yet, but they've probably had the least amount of time on the charger. I'm pretty confident that if I leave these overnight on two amp, that they'll be twelve volts in the morning. So I'm gonna call this a complete 100% success. If you guys enjoyed my videos, please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. Heck yeah, saved me 90 bucks just on this one battery.